designers, how's it going? I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Welcome back to a seal by sketchbook. This is one of the topics that intimidate people because they don't know where to start, what to get. And I want to create a guide that is comprehensive, that adds everything up and that it makes it easier for you to find the sources, the softwares and the equipments that you might need as an interior designer, whether you're a student or you're a freelancer or self-learning interior design. All of us start from a point where like, oh my God, what do we do? What do we get? What do we buy? And what computer do we use? So I'll get to every single part and I'll explain it to you. You can now order your own hard copy of the interior design styles lookbook. More information in the description. Let's start with the question of the video. I want to ask you, what do you do right now? Are you an interior design student or are you a freelancer or what do you exactly do? Drop it in the comments down below. We're going to divide this video into three different parts. So practical tools, stuff that you might need as a stationery, like things that that you will draw with and then we will go towards software and finally the equipment which means laptops iPads things like that so if you want to jump between parts you'll find all of the timestamps down below so if you are a student and you're enrolled in an interior design program it can be quite tricky to know exactly what you need to get when we first entered university we were not allowed to use any kind of software so we had to bring a3 paper we had to bring the tracing paper but I understand the reason behind Behind this and uh, we also were required to get T squares and triangles and of course like drafting pens so it was an intensive work but it kind of like teaches you with the fundamentals foundation that is away from softwares and more focused on how the traditional methods were so if I was to go back to being a student and focusing on buying things that are essential I would buy very little things and also I would not buy the most expensive thing in the world and when I was studying there was no Amazon so <laughs> that was actually very essential and right now I curated an entire board an idea board on Amazon so if you want to look into different tools I gathered them all in one place and this is the board so here are the tools that I would buy if I went back to university and what you do need is to actually learn how to express your ideas through your hand first before you actually jump into software and that's why they start teaching you manual drafting in the beginning so these are the things that you might need and of course you have to look into your university program before buying anything just to make sure that these are the stuff that you need starting with t-squares draw straight lines or perpendicular lines 90 degree lines and also they are used to support your triangle which is also added here so basically you will learn how to draw perspective drawings and you'll learn how to manually draft so that's why we would need t-squares so you would need a scale so for us we use the metric system and usually interior designers use uh, millimeters in any country in the world if you use inches you have to make sure that you search for the proper scale tool and then of course you will need a good eraser this is a set that I found I actually had to buy all of those stuff individually you will be erasing a lot because it's very normal to make mistakes there's also a bunch of templates furniture templates that are 1 to 50 or 1 to 25 that we buy usually for the same sake of drafting manually graph paper is something that I personally use because I could assume a scale on that paper of course there's also tracing paper Valium and then there is the normal tracing paper and this one is more expensive looking so it's great for presentations but this one is for something that you will use a lot use tracing paper to go on top of plans and explore different layouts and explore different options drafting dots are for fixing the paper on the tape and also in my university we were required to buy those actually it wasn't an optional thing but it's the rotring pins and there are professional pins that are used with different line weights but you don't have to get them exactly I know a bunch of girls in my class who actually just got away with buying these instead which are the uni pens which are very similar to the concept of the rotring and they're less expensive but usually they ask you to get this set um, I found it really hard to maintain. I have to tell you my opinion of it, but again, it all depends on your program. Handsome some paper is what we use for freehand drawing classes. Also, we always needed a portfolio on us. So we needed an A3 file and an A2 file and also an A4 file. So if you want to buy any of those file sizes, you need to understand again what your program requires. For the triangle, of course, you will need to have an understanding of different angles and when you are drawing ISO 
isometric uh, perspectives. You'll need a triangle drawing tool. And of course you need pencils, so with different line weights. As well. So there's also the perspective grid sketch pad, which I only found <laughs> now after I graduated, but I wish I have had it since day one when I was studying because it's very, very useful. So this is not required, but I think it's very important. And especially when I was drawing at home, I needed something like this. So it's basically a combination of those drawing tools, which is a T square and the triangle, but it's all on one board. And of course there is the light box, which is great for tracing if you do need tracing. More templates for furniture, for elevations as well, and for sections. Copic markers are great for shading. They are a little hefty on the price, but they're refillable, so you can always get them refilled. There's the marker pad where you can use Copic markers without bleeding onto the paper. There is post-it notes. You need post-it notes, and I found those in white, and I think they're great. So sometimes you do need to just make notes, and also for distributing areas and exploring different options. So the next thing that I would recommend is not very necessary, but hear me out. If you actually have the budget, it's something that of a luxury. So don't tell me like, oh, do I need an iPad? Actually, no, you don't. In the beginning, especially, you don't need an iPad. It's a tool that will help you plan your day. It will, it's a tool will help you with digital sketching later on. It's a tool that will help you to add personality into your presentations, but it isn't a very essential tool. But I think if you can afford or you can invest or save up for an iPad, it would be a great tool for you in the future. Of course, a cutting mat, uh, you will need it for making models because there is a workshop studio class for every single program that I've researched. And of course, you will need the Oho stick or any kind of glue sticks. Uh, I found this as a bundle so you can go ahead and grab it or you can just get one and also there's the exacto knife which is something you'll use a lot if you are working on model building and cutters there's also the paper cutter I'm using it now a lot in my life and I think if I was in university building mood boards and things like that it's a lot easier to cut than scissors you'll need a pair of scissors don't get me wrong but this would have been so great so yeah also rulers, metal rulers for to use with the exacto knife because sometimes you need to cut straight edges. I already talked about those pens. There's also the micron pens which are really really great. And finally a mixed media Canson, Canson I think is one of the leading brand in paper. So if you want to go ahead and buy a really good sketchbook for assignments, things like that, go for Canson. Otherwise, one more thing I'd like to add actually, I'll add it to the board, but it's a, a moleskin or a sketchbook that is dedicated to exploring options or to sticking all of the different scraps because you will be cutting a lot of pictures out of magazines you'll be sketching a lot on different media and then you will need to kind of save everything up so if you want to save up your work if you want to document your work and i really encourage you to it's one of my biggest regrets uh, after i graduated i would get a sketchbook to save every single part of my design these are the tools that they required us if you are self-learning interior design and you want to get some of those tools i'll highlight them for you on purple i added a checklist on my website that you can download with all of those tools and more and the software just click on that link in the description i'm sorry guys she's been really meowing all over the place so for the software we will start with planning and organizing there's a lot of different tools that you can have but if i was an interior design student if I was trying to learn interior design, I'll go for a Google Calendar for organizing my week. It's very good to have your deadlines, especially if you're an interior design student. You will have your deadlines organized and also when your classes are and when is everything due. But also you will need a place to organize all of the information. I have two different softwares I would really advise you to go for. I love Notion, obviously. I have a video about Notion already, but I wish I had it as an interior design student because you have the flexibility to organize everything and it's free as well for students. You can't upload all of the files there, but you can access Google Drive if you want to kind of link things together. And if you are self-learning interior design, you can still go for Notion. There's also Trello, which creates different boards for ideas. And of course, I really, really recommend that you go for Pinterest. Have the Pinterest app be one of the number ones apps that you access and kind of try to absorb as many good ideas as you can. 
I know it might seem anticlimactic to look at other people's work, but it actually gives you an understanding of what you like and it will create your personal style. We can't be 100% original, but uh, we can definitely get inspired from other people, which is why we need Pinterest to look on to the trends and materials and things like that. For floor plans, we used to work on AutoCAD and we still have AutoCAD as for the main floor plan software, but of course there are different softwares that you can go for. One of those softwares is SketchUp. SketchUp is a 3D software, but people sometimes learn it for 2D effects. So you can take sections of 3D models, you can create 3D models and cut it into 2D. And of course there's Revit. We have a course on Revit, by the way, for interior designers on my website and by my husband. And Revit is one of those softwares that people don't see as an interior designer software, but it's actually the top of the top companies. They require you to know Revit for them to even consider to hire you. So if your goal is to get hired in a top company, then of course you need to learn Revit and that can be a way to have the floor plans, elevations, things like that easily drawn and organized. For 3D modeling, a lot of people ask me this question and I always recommend SketchUp because it has a 3D warehouse. And again, there's a free version of SketchUp, but you are limited to not exporting a certain type of SketchUp. So I actually pay for SketchUp, which is again, your personal choice. I do not like to work on SketchUp on my Mac, but of course, if you have a PC, then SketchUp is perfect. There's also 3D Max. 3D Max is a little bit more complicated and has a little bit of a higher learning curve, but it pays off if you do learn it. But I would rather cut my head off and use it as a hat because honestly, I hate 3D Max. I hate V-Ray. But again, 3D Max sometimes is a good option for people and you don't have to take my word for it. You have to experiment it for yourself. Of course, there are other softwares, but uh, these are the main softwares and the most popular softwares that people use. For 3D rendering, I use Lumion. I've always been a fan of Lumion and I didn't learn Lumion back in university. It's super easy. It will take your renderings to the next level. I did a coaching, a one-on-one -on -one coaching with one of the girls and she was an interior design student and they didn't believe that it was her rendering because the result is incredible and then you would only have to learn how to model in SketchUp and it's very easy to learn that. By the way, we have a course coming up on SketchUp. For presentations, usually you have to learn some sort of a software. So there is PowerPoint. You can definitely work magic on PowerPoint if you learn the tricks behind it. I have a video on that. But of course, you do need a professional software and again, I recommend Photoshop. Photoshop is intimidating. It can be a little bit too much to learn in the beginning but if you learn it you will be so thankful you did because it's great not only for presentations but for post productions on your renders it's great for adding visual effects visual interests graphics I have a course I know that I'm plugging my courses you guys but again it's very useful for you to actually go ahead and check those courses out I have a Photoshop course especially for interior designers so it doesn't contain any information that you might not need and it contains things that will help you as an interior designer. For budgeting, Excel is the main one. And of course, like budgeting is one of those skills that you have to learn as an interior design student or as an interior design self-learner, a freelancer. I don't care what you do. Budgeting is one of those things, especially if you want to deal with people, you have to understand how to work on their budget. So Excel is a great software to learn. I also use Notion when the project is less complex because there is a way to create an expense sheet. Again, this is my video for Notion. <laughs> so yeah, these are the main softwares that you might want to learn as an interior designer. Of course, there's other softwares and there's a lot of different options. You have to find the ones that work for you, but these are the ones that I personally recommend and that work for me. So yeah. Now we go to the last part of the video and that is the digital hardware or the equipment, the digital equipment that we might need. I get this question all the time. So you guys ask me whether it's a good idea to get an iPad instead of a laptop. And my answer is hell no. 
don't do that if you have the budget for one digital device do not get an ipad instead opt for a pc not a macbook not an imac opt for a pc these are the specs that you need to look for you can screenshot this and add it to your phone and understand what you need to ask when you go to buy a laptop or a new laptop if you don't have but i promise you that if you get a pc it's a lot more helpful when you're learning software a lot of different softwares don't actually have a version that's friendly for macbooks or for imacs so the thing is sometimes it can be disheartening i have an imac and i have a macbook but that's because i do video editing and i need this for that but again if you do have the luxury to buy two things you can buy a pc and an ipad there's a lot of options for ipads you don't have to get the most expensive one but you can get one with an apple pencil and then you'll be able to kind of express yourself better and you know organize have a digital organization system i mean ipads are great for a lot of things i'll make a video in detail on how i use my ipad as an interior designer but i promise you that if i would tell you to buy one thing get a pc a macbook looks great and that's the thing like i love the macbook but if you want to buy a macbook you'll need the top of the tier of the line which can be incredibly expensive and you need to install bootcamp to run things like Lumion, for example, and uh, you'll need sometimes to, you know, compromise. And even working on SketchUp on a MacBook is a nightmare. So I would highly recommend a PC. Most definitely you need a mouse. Don't be one of those people. I remember I had a couple of my university friends. They were working with a trackpad on the laptop. Don't do that. It can be very dangerous for your fingers on the long run. So make sure that you get a nice mouse and make sure that it's ergonomic this is the mouse that my husband uses and it's really good for like how it handles your hand so if you're working with like sketchup and 3d modeling you don't get hand cramps and it doesn't disfigure your hand for the long time other necessities that you might need you need a good laptop bag because if you are taking your computer around and you want to show clients it's a nice way to show a little bit of personality or to have something that's a little bit of a classic cut or classic material and of course there is the hard desk well honestly get a hard desk from day one and also subscribe to freaking iCloud or any kind of service that uploads your files online because it can be very easy to lose digital files as you progress through your journey as an interior designer so if I was to give myself an advice from like my past self I would tell her to freaking have everything organized because otherwise you're screwed and you'll not have all of the work you know ready for you when you need them and you need to build a portfolio so having everything in one place will make it easy for you to build a portfolio finally if you don't want to invest the money on an iPad which is iPads again they're great for digital sketching great for adding personality to your existing work but if you don't have the money to buy an iPad a great way to be able to draw things digitally is a, a Wacom tablet so I'll link some of my favorite down below and also it's all on my Amazon shop front I get a lot of questions about my desk setup as well so you'll find everything on my amazon front so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video in the beginning of the video we learned the best tools and we explored a little bit about software and digital equipment and hardware and if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe to like this video to click all the things down below and of course if you want to go ahead and check out my courses in different software and also if you want to learn a little bit about interior design styles i have a book i've written illustrated and done all of the things self-published and it's uh, the interior design styles lookbook i'll leave a link down below so check it out and thank you so much for watching this i hope you have a great time of the day wherever you're on the world don't forget to leave any questions that you have down below goodbye